As we look at literature and art and music that was popular in the 1800s, we can learn about the impact the Industrial Revolution had on society. But before we look at really the changes in art that take place as a result of the Industrial Revolution, let's first consider what was popular as the Industrial Revolution was getting going. And that would be an artistic movement called Romanticism, where ideas were set long, long ago and far, far away. It's considered the first modern art movement, but because it encompassed a variety of past styles, you probably won't look at this art as being particularly revolutionary especially compared to some of the other artistic movements that I will be showing you in subsequent presentations. It certainly is important to note that the increased ability to travel as a result of the inventions of the Industrial Revolution does fuel the romantic interest in exotic lands. And really, if you wanted to sum up Romanticism in a really quick, straightforward definition, you would say it is an artistic movement that appeals to emotion rather than reason. So looking at some particularly emotional examples, and I'm choosing three that I think have stories that you may have heard of before, starting with Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, where we have this ugly hunchback servant of a wicked archdeacon, a struggling poet, and a handsome king's soldier, all in love with a beautiful, kind gypsy named Esmeralda. All of these character stories intertwine around the Notre Dame de Paris, commonly referred to as Notre Dame Cathedral, which was this Gothic cathedral built back in the 1100s into the early 1200s. By the 1800s, the cathedral's falling apart, and Hugo, who normally writes more straightforward, not emotional, but more serious political-type stories, wanted to appeal to people's emotions so that they would donate to the fund that was being set up to refurbish the cathedral. And his story did have such an emotional impact that, yes, people did donate, and Notre Dame Cathedral was restored and is still standing for all of us to go visit today. And there have been so many adaptations of this very emotional story that perhaps you've even seen the Disney cartoon version. Another story that has been told and retold for many hundreds of years is Alexander Dumas' The Three Musketeers. In fact, there's a new version of it that's coming out this year, a new movie version. And basically, this is a story that's romantic in the sense that they get into all these adventures that may or may not really be able to happen in real life. And it's set long ago, right, in the 1600s, even though Alexander Dumas wrote in the 1800s. Another story you may have heard different updated versions of is Faust. Faust was a character who was sort of bored with life. He had learned everything he thought there was to know in the world, and he thought, there's nothing more for me. What can I do? And so he comes upon the devil who says, well, if I find something that you're interested in, will you sell your soul to me? And so through a chain of events, the devil, who's known as Mephistopheles in this story, shows him or introduces him to a woman named Gretchen. And Faust falls in love and subsequently sells his soul to Mephistopheles, but really, no good ensues, and all kinds of tragic things happen to Gretchen and Faust as a result of this relationship. Looking at art, one of the most famous Romantic artists is Eugene Delacroix. And if you look at this painting, the Sultan of Morocco and his entourage, something that took place far away. This is over in North Africa. And just looking at the styles of people compared to the real, you know, buttoned up and severe Victorian look, this would definitely appeal to people's emotions as they looked at this. And then just to kind of end, and I will play some of this music for you tomorrow, but romantic composers include Tchaikovsky, who hopefully you guys are familiar with, with his famous work, The Nutcracker. And then the other really famous musician that you should be familiar with is Beethoven. And again, he's appealing to emotions, either joy or foreboding, depending on which symphony.